RM277, an experimental rifle that was submitted to the Next Generation Squad Weapon Program, the NGSW. Of course, we got the Sig Spear, which was adopted from that program. However, this weapon, the RM277, wasn't. But in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at this very fascinating weapon. It's very different from everything that you've likely seen before, from the controls to the way it operates. Polymer ammo, closed or open bolt operation. All of the controls being accessible from your hand, not being able to move. And of course, a bullpup, possibly in military service. And of course, the potato <laughs> as a suppressor. Tons to talk about, we are very excited. But without further ado, let's get into it. But of course, before we get into it, we have to thank the biggest sponsor of the channel, no Charles, the Sonoran Desert Institute. If you're looking to get your start in gunsmithing, we cannot recommend them enough. We we absolutely love them. They're awesome. They support the channel and all the crazy stuff we do, like take a look at an experimental rifle. So go check them out if that's something you're interested in. And Micah, who can we not forget? Primary arms. Yeah, I don't think they have an NGSW optic, unfortunately. They could. They're they're getting pretty good. Anything you want to buy. They have it. One of our favorite optics, the Compact 1 to 8, is there. Point is, go and check them out. If you want to get better at shooting, we recommend dry fire. And of course, nothing is better than Mantis. Go and check them out. They will turn your weapon into a dry fire machine. And finally, AAC for our ammunition sponsor. Obviously, today, AAC does not make polar ammunition, but generally, they do support our ammo choices. So let's get into full disclosures right here. So full disclosure, this rifle has gone through a few changes in the time since it was developed. Originally developed by General Dynamics, but now everything is owned by True Velocity, who also makes the polymer cased ammunition for it, which is very interesting. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but it should be noted that we do have uh, employees from True Velocity here. They obviously had to bring these experimental rifles out to us. Um, we have five of their employees. They've been advised us as far as the capabilities of the rifle. And then of course we are testing these in an unbiased manner. But today is more of an overview and a look at emerging military technology, which is probably one of our favorite things to do videos on. Isn't that it right, Mike? genuinely Micah? my favorite. It, it's so cool. And there are so many cool things about this rifle. Talk is cheap, Micah. Let's shoot this guy. So before we even start, one thing that I really want to talk about is the cartridge. So right here we are using a 277. This is different than the 277 we talked about with the SIG Spear. This is a polymer case ammunition. Because we have a much longer barrel compared to the SIG, we're able to operate this at, we'll say better pressures as well as better velocities. This is more powerful than a 308. This should have more impulse than a 308, but for some reason it doesn't. Now, I'm not gonna be able to explain that to you better than one of the True Velocity employees. So come on in. You want to introduce yourself? Dave Stauffer, and I lead a weapons division at True Velocity. Awesome. Can you tell me why this weapon just does not recoil? So this weapon operates off something called short recoil impulse averaging. It operates off both short recoil, similar to how an M2 Browning is, and, and some, some pistols that operate off short recoil. It also operates off gas. So we have a gas system kind of similar to how a 240 or a 249 operates. When we couple the two of those together, we can make the internal parts of the weapon move in a certain way. We can control the momentum of those parts inside the weapon, and we can effectively cut the recoil force of this weapon in half. And then we manage the rest of the recoil, similar to what an M4 does with buffers and springs and whatnot. So we have a weapon with a very powerful cartridge uh, that has a much lower recoil than you would expect out of a cartridge that's roughly equivalent to 270 Winchester. I love future weapon technology so much. Let's see what that looks like in action. Turbo retard terms. I'm gonna show you how little this thing recoils. <laughs> you can't do that with a 308, dude. Not even close. Mikey, you gotta try this, this dude. This is crazy. You might have noticed if you're an eagle eye viewer that this weapon was firing from both closed and an open bolt. So here's the difference. An open bolt is something you typically see in a machine gun, in a submachine gun. The bolt is held to the rear, you pull the trigger, bolt rides forward, hits, detonates around, rides forward. When you let off the trigger, it's held to the rear. So there's a little bit of a delay. What's good about that is there nothing, there's nothing in the chamber, in the barrel, there's no chance of a cook-off. That's when the chamber gets super hot and actually self-ignites around and also allows the weapon to cool off very well. So it can fire in open or it can find fired and closed. Simply what you see with an AR-15, bolts forward, 
rounds locked in place. So it can actually do both, and I'll show you what that looks like. So right here we're in open, you can see the bolt held to the rear, and when I fire it, okay, that is fired and open. Now I can change that to closed, hit the trigger, and we are back in close. You can't tell me that's not the craziest thing you've ever seen. I've never seen a weapon that does anything even close to this. What's so good about it, best example I would have would be from like the Battle of Wanat. Battle of Wanat, a Ford operating base during the War on Terror, was almost overrun. The machine guns weren't able to depress enough, they didn't have enough, where they were firing their weapons nearly fully cyclic the entire time. Because of the heat that was being generated on those M4s, the M4s began to malfunction pretty badly and the base was nearly overrun. Now, if you had a rifle, say like the RM277, where you could switch over to open bolt, you can mitigate a lot of those heat issues and you can allow the rifle to work in a slightly different way so that it can passively cool faster and not run into those issues as soon as a closed bolt weapon would like the AR-15 M4. Now there is a problem with firing from an open bolt. So I'll show you that right here. So first off, we switch from closed to open. It will take one round before it switches, switches over. So we'll do that right here. See, now we're in open. Now if you notice, when I fire from that open, when I pull that trigger, there's that momentary delay as that bolt rides forward. It's very similar to what you feel on a machine gun. So you'll see that a couple more times. Michael, we'll get real close here. It's good as far as heat mitigation, but there is a little bit of a learning curve when it comes to firing an open bolt weapon. Now, we've shown a lot of recoil control. Let's see what it looks like on paper and who is gonna win, me or Micah. We are doing quite a few tests on the RM277 today. We'll be starting with a recoil mitigation test, seeing how easy it is to control. We'll then be grouping the weapon. We'll then be testing the weapon in clear ballistic gelatin using ammo. 277 <laughs> ammo. We'll be testing it on a ballistic dummy to show you an approximation of what it would look like through a human being, and we'll be firing it through a barrier. As well, we'll be doing a build drill to show the trigger speed. Now, when it comes to the barrier and the ballistics, we'll be testing that against also 77 grain and 308 so you can see how it performs. With all that being said, let's go and start with our first test. So, we right here have the A zone. You cannot fire outside the A zone, right, Micah? Correct. So, outside the A zone doesn't count, and it will be. You what? You'll be DQ'd. DQ'd. It's going to be counted uh, over 20 rounds. So 20 rounds is perfect score. We're going to be standing at 10 yards and we'll do auto from open bolt. You ready, Mike? Yeah. Okay. On you. 19 rounds in A zone. Walked off. I think it was like that second round when I first, when that bolt first dropped. Not bad. I think you're going to beat me though. So it should be noted how crazy this group is. You've probably seen us fire like the MP5SD and that has a group that's kind of similar. This thing is firing with very little, uh, very little recoil. It's very crazy that we're firing around this powerful. That's that easy to control. You don't see that firing like a battle rifle on auto, like a G3 or an FAL, that doesn't happen. Uh, would All you right. like to draw a mag out of the Onward Research Assault Sheesh. Placard? Six, six, 308 mags. That's Are we in open or closed bolt? Open. <laughs> so the, this is the weirdest part. All right, <laughs> it's open. I dropped the bolt, I it's guess. Good. Up. Dude, if I saw exactly what happened, one, that's an amazing group. We ah. have the same size group. But mine just shifted you, over three inches. It's, it was, it's that, you've only fired this twice. Yeah. So it was that initial bolt, because that's the only weird part about it. Do you want to try it in closed bolt too? I kind of do. Okay, let's try it um, in closed bolt. Okay, we'll now be repeating the same test. We'll be firing from the closed bolt auto All to right. see Are if Are we already changes. on closed bolt? Yeah. You got to charge the weapon, yeah. Okay, cool. Stand by. Up. Oh, that one had more recoil, I feel yeah. like. So the open bolt actually has less recoil compared to the closed yeah, bolt. Yeah, thousand percent. Noticed it right away. <sighs> to, to be clear, that's incredible <laughs> with the power that you're seeing. For sure. Okay, I, let me, let me yeah, try it. Am turn. I going to beat you? Yes. This is so unfair to Micah because every time- You've been shooting it all day. We'll talk Stand about by. that. Up. Yeah, you smoked me. A little worse than open bolt. I got two in the Charlie, but 
that is ridiculously tight. Polymer case ammo, we're gonna be grouping it. It should be noted that the, um, <laughs> this is the original General Dynamics rifle. It's had a lot of rounds on it, so the barrel is a little bit worn, so we're not gonna get the, uh, I guess, accuracy we should be getting. What should we be getting? Two to four MOA. Okay, what are we gonna be getting? Find out. Okay, let's group it. <laughs> So, and on top of that, uh, the trigger on this is a machine gun trigger. It's uh, really not my favorite trigger at all, but we uh, we persevere. I've been shooting a lot, so I should be good at it, right? Yeah, the trigger, we'll talk about that later. <sighs> okay, here we go. Five? Okay. <laughs> okay, Micah, you give it a shot, buddy. All right. <laughs> uh, first round impact for me. Second round impact. Third, fourth. I think the fifth is. I don't know. Micah's was here, 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 here. Maybe one of mine was low. That was a terrible. Uh, it's just. The barrel's worn and the trigger's really bad. I don't think we're gonna be able to get true accuracy out of this thing. It does government testing, it did two to four. So it's apparently capable, but these guns are just shot out. So that's on them. They should have brought they should have brought a new barrel. Dude. Now it should be noted that's two to four MO8 benched that trigger man. I don't think it's capable of that. Better trigger and uh a barrel that's not shot out. Probably would have been better. But we have what we have, so let's test the other aspects of the rifle. Okay, to illustrate the trigger, since we're been kind of bagging on it, let's go ahead, let's do what we always do, let's go set trigger together. So we're on semi right now, closed bolt. You can see right here, we have a lot of play. About solid, <laughs> it's like the entire trigger pull of the an AR. And then from there, press it into it, about four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, release from the reset <clears throat> reset right there so from the re reset it's not terrible it's about 33 pounds it's a roll let's say it's like a machine gun trigger that's what this, uh, this weapon is originally de designed for uh, i am going to disagree to some extent um, this does feel a lot mushier than most machine gun triggers this is an easy upgrade, easy change. I understand this rifle hasn't been kind of changed up much since NGSW, and it met the original requirements, but I'm not gonna mince words, that trigger is terrible. Very, very bad. Do you think it's the new worst we've had? Yeah, it's worse than the AUG. So we're now going to be showing you the performance of a few different rounds in comparison to the RM277. So right here we have clear ballistic gels in. It's a good approximation to show you performance of a round. Right here we're gonna start with the classic weapon currently in use by SOCOM, this is URGI, firing 77 grain OTM, which is an open tip match round. Uh, it is war ammo. Next up, we have the MR762A1, which is an M110A1 analog. The only difference being in the twist rate, it is firing 168 grain Sierra Match Kings. Again, a war round. Now, this is a DMR. This is a very heavy, very powerful round. We'll be comparing that directly against the RM277 with its ammunition, and we'll see how they all look in ballistics, ballistics gelatin. I'm pretty interested, actually, because apparently it's supposed to have some pretty good performance compared to 308. Okay, first up, we have your GI firing 77 grain. All right, let's go check it out. Okay, let's go ahead and check the performance. You can see that the 77 grain performed literally perfect. It, it shredded the jacket off at the end, the projectile exited, and we had explosive compression as it traveled through the uh, ballistic skeleton. This is a wonderful view of how well 556 can perform. I just love 77 grain. We have HK417, basically M110A1, firing 168 grain Sierra Match King.
308, man, just kills. This is really good and very indicative of the typical performance you see from a good Sierra Mash King round. You can see the fragmentation, the explosive compression, the jacket separation as it tears apart in the body, and we had an ex excellent exit of the entire slug itself, which is what we want to see on clear ballistics gelatin. Again, we want a lot of penetration out of this round, especially at this distance. So, phenomenal performance. Let's see how the 277 performs. <laughs> oh my god you know what people say they don't say oh my god anymore they say like giat damn what, what, what's what are the what do the kids damn. say they say uh this oh, thing ate everything that, and left th that that shit ate and left no crumbs that would be it we have the entrance right here, immediate, immediate expansion and flowering. But if you notice, although the projectile begins to shear off, it continues through and continues to yaw. We have a great indication of that yawing. You can see the flowering petals, the flowering petals. If you notice, they stop for a second and then they continue. That thing's yawn in there. That's extremely violent. Chat, is this violent? Chat, is this real? Now, this video is brought to you by Aura. So have you ever Googled your name or email and you were shocked to see that your personal information was available to anyone searching? There are companies called data brokers that collect and sell your information to spammers, hackers, anyone who may want to target you. Your name, home address, health records, your relatives, what you buy, it's all out there for anyone to find and buy. Now, there are a lot of people who want this information, from the spammers that call you every day, to companies that are targeting you in social media ad campaigns, to the federal government. That is right, the US government is buying your data to see what website you're visiting, what apps you're using, and more. Show in the boys chat. Which is why I've been a long time user of Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura monitors the web 24 seven to see which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submits the request on my behalf to remove me from these lists. Clean up my information not only reduces the amount of spam I get, but it protects me from hackers who could use this type of information to help them access my social media accounts, hack bank accounts, other sensitive information. Who knows what it is. With Aura, you also get credit monitoring, antivirus, VPN, password management, parental controls, identity theft monitoring and insurance all in a single app at one affordable price i value my privacy you should value yours go to aura.com forward slash grantham and you get a free week trial link right below in the description go check them out get back to the video our wall analog so how good is the round at defeating cover so you're gonna want to get behind cover to make sure you're not shot but if the round is powerful enough maybe it's gonna go straight through we're gonna find out how good the 277 is at punching straight through concrete. <laughs> whoa, whoa, I could see the hole all the way through. That it just kind of kept it upright so I could take it off if I wanted, put it back on. It's like a piece of modern art, you know? <laughs> two, let's get two. So we're gonna put up two and uh, see what happens. No, oh, it was okay. like right at the edge. Yeah. yeah, it was right at the edge. That's good, that's excellent performance. Uh, this is very similar to 308 in terms of carry through. I think the thing that we found in, in terms of testing this type of shit before is um, usually it's the grainage of the round that's going to make the difference in carry through. This is very similar to 308, just maybe about 20 grains less. So pretty similar. All right, let's chrono it. So we have a 19 inch barrel, which allows them to have less pressure than the SIG uh, to push the velocity that they need to. So we're gonna go ahead and see what that velocity is. We have our chrono right here. Uh, big uh, thank you to Optics Planet for uh, sending that to us. Very base Optics Planet. Ready, Micah? Ready. Okay, 2891, 2873, 2898. Okay, so we're sitting about the upper 2800s. So we have a 135 grain slug traveling 2898. That's kind of ridiculous. Not to mention there is development of the round still ongoing, but we, we don't get to touch that stuff. So pretty cool. A lot of... Uh, good developments that can be made, that's a psychotic amount of power. Especially with like how easy it is to control. You ready, Micah? Yep. Oh, I'm 
out. Not for long. Effortless. It's effortless. Oh, Lord. I love this gun. So we've done a lot of shooting. Now it's time to do my favorite part, the autistic portion, the talking. So the, uh, the 277 has been a very interesting weapon to get our hands on, to do a lot of testing on. It is experimental. It was a part of an experimental program. Uh, it wasn't selected, so there was a bit of a pause in development, but from what we've heard, there might be more development happening in the future. So understand that, like all future weapon technology, it's apt to change in the future. But we're gonna take a look at what we think about it so far. So the first thing I wanna start with is a suppressor, and it is actually an Idaho potato that is bored out for to be a flow through. Now, for real though, the people make it are Delta P design. It's a flow through suppressor, and what they're looking to do with modern suppressors is, it obviously has to do signature, signature reduction, that being flash and heat and sound, but the big thing on top of that is of course gonna be the fumes that are coming back from that suppressor, back through the action because of the back pressure. So with a lot of these NGSW submissions, both Sear, both the Sig Spear, as well as this one right here, their suppressors had to be able to essentially not give you cancer because of the blowback. And this suppressor achieves it, as well as reducing the decibels by over 20 dB. And me and Micah's you know, opinion on this suppressor, it's been performing extremely well. We've shot this thing really hard and you know we, we did melt some stuff to it. But beyond that, uh, this has worked extremely well. I'm very pleased with the performance I've seen from the suppressor. Beyond that, we do have a 19 inch barrel right here. We weren't really able to test accuracy seen as this barrel is somewhat shot out. But um, we'll, we'll test that in the future here. They are putting together a few more guns, so we'll test accuracy in the future here. But um, I'm very interested to see the accuracy potential of uh, 277 or 6.8, specifically because of its BC. It's a really high BC. BC stands for ballistic coefficient. Um, essentially, it's how well is the round able to fly. And it flies a lot better than a 308, which isn't saying much. But that allows it to retain its energy, to retain its accuracy for much further. So moving back from there, um, we'll have to kind of do evaluations on the barrel fo moving forward here. But we'll talk about the charging handle. So the charging handle is ambidextrous. It folds out and you're able to charge the weapon. Um, due to the recoil mitigation mechanism that is within this particular rifle, it's a little bit odd to charge it. It's not as smooth as, say, you know, an FIL or a G3. But once you get used to it, um, especially if you go to the gym, you're going to be fine. Just kidding. You really don't need to go to the gym for this. It's going to perform very well for you. So you can see that right there. Of course, on this side, we do have our light, so it's going to impede that somewhat. But that's just how you, however you want to have the rifle set up. Now, on the side, we do have M-Lock. Of course, we have panels right here, so we have M-Lock all around it um, to mount any type of accessories. And for lambs, your lasers, your packs, whatever, those go up in the top rail, and those will stay perfectly zero as it is a monolithic system. The charging handle is non-reciprocating. That being said, you do get a little bit of jiggle as you fire the weapon. This isn't um, anything that's crazy. A lot of uh, more powerful weapons will have a little bit of that jiggle, a little bit of that shift in the charging handle, even if they are non-reciprocating, it hasn't been an issue at all. Um, in terms of rail height, sometimes bull pops with the charging handle right below the rail, you'll run into problems where um, due to a lot of these optic mounts, you kind of end up hitting your knuckles on that. Due to how far this folds out, you'll see right there, you're able to clear past that and that's not really an issue. So that was a good design feature from the True Velocity team. Moving back from there, let's talk a little bit about the controls. Um, the controls are probably the most interesting part of this weapon, mainly because you can essentially operate everything with one hand, uh, either side. So let's go ahead and delve into it. All right, so starting here on the side, you can see all these different switches. And what we're gonna start with is going to be the magazine release. So the magazine release is right here. So when I'm holding the weapon right here, and I hit that magazine release, I'm going to, of course, drop the mag. So I'll go ahead and show that to you guys. It's a very smooth movement. Easy. Drops free. No issues there. So we have a magazine release. From there, we have our selector. So we have safe. And you can see when the weapon is on safe, it's actually partially in the trigger right there. It's kind of blocking your way. So when you're indexing your trigger, you can feel it, know you're on safe. And then you go to fire, you just flick it up. It's very smooth, very fast. 
I know a lot of my AR guys will kind of not be used to it because they're used to doing the thumb. This is just a manual of arms thing. I found this to be very safe. And my favorite part is one, it's about a 20-ish, 25-ish degree throw, and then up to auto or really fun mode, it's a very short throw, about another 15 to 25 degrees. So feels great. I love the selector very much. I like how it's kind of intuitive. You know when you're on safe because it gets in the way of the trigger right there. So we have our safety right there. For our grip, normal AR grip, uh, whatever grip you want on there, I don't have any problems with this. Whatever grip angle you want is going to work. Now, a couple other things we have right here that are very interesting. First off, we'll talk about the bolt release and the bolt catch right here. So depending on how you want to do things, you can either release the bolt or you can catch the bolt. So we have our empty mag right here. Well, maybe that's not the best way to show it. So if I grab onto the charging handle, and I pull that back because I have a malfunction, what have you, and I need to lock that bolt to the rear. I'm gonna pull that back, press that back. That's going to lock that bolt back so that it can clear malfunction or for administrative purposes. Very good design. I like that quite a bit. And once you load, you can simply push forward on that. You can either do it on this side or on this side. I'll be honest, in my time using it, I'm still kind of working out which is gonna be fastest, whether it's fastest to roll my thumb over and hit it, hit it with the thumb over here. So far, I've kind of been hitting it with my thumb right here. So what I'll do is I'll get that magazine in and then I'll immediately drop it. And that is a pretty quick procedure. Um, I like that a lot. The controls are intuitive and simple to use. From there, we have probably the most interesting part of the weapon, and that is going to be the bolt close, bolt hold open. We've kind of already shown that. It's very easy to press over to. It's a little bit weird in operation when you're using it. So if you're on closed when the weapon is loaded, so it's in the closed setting, load a magazine and drop the round. I'll show you guys right here. So put the magazine in. I'm on the closed setting right there. You can see it. Charge the weapon. Gun's loaded. And if I were to flip it to open, it's not immediately obviously gonna pop open or anything like that. I actually have to fire that first round before it goes to open. So you can see right there, we are now in the open bolt position. So from there, it will fire from the open bolt. And we've already talked about that quite a bit. Now, if I'm going to flip that to closed, so I put it to closed, it's obviously not gonna immediately slam forward or anything like that. It's after that first trigger pull that it will then go to closed. I'll go ahead and show you guys that now. You can see we're now in the closed position. As a quick note, on how that functionality works. Now it can get a little weird at times, and here's what we're gonna talk about. So when we're in the open position, it's so funny how, that's by design. It kind of holds it there and then it chucks it forward. It's a really cool design. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But if I go to open, I'm gonna go ahead and clear that out. Cool. So bolts in the open position, but if I go dry on that mag, and I go to drop the bolt, it's actually not going to go all the way forward. That's what kind of messed me up at first. So if I go to drop it, it's on the open bolt position. <laughs> this is what happened to me and Micah the first few times we're like, oh, did it jam up? But no, it's in that open bolt configuration. Therefore, the bolt's not gonna go all the way forward when you drop it on a full mag when you're ready to fire because it's gonna stay in that open bolt position. So another thing to note is on the ejection. First off, the ejection is forward. So it's actually, you're capable of firing it from the, as a lefty with the right side ejection, or you can of course switch the whole mechanism over. So we'll go ahead and show that right now. Okay, so you can see how it goes forward. So if I had to shoot it as a lefty, I'm getting a little bit more gas in my face because of where the ejection port cover is, but otherwise I'm not getting that brass straight into my mouth like you would with an AUG, where it's just dumping into your mouth, which is horrible. One other thing that we have to talk about that's really important is going to be the polymer ammunition. So first off, you have one of these rounds chambered, you pop that guy out, you eject around, you can immediately grab onto it because polymer, it's not going to retain heat, which is extremely nice. A big thing as well is going to be weight reduction. So for any of my guys out there who have Climbed, climbed the mountains. You climbed the mountains with a full combat loadout, Micah. How was it? <laughs> Not great. <laughs> Sucks. Any weight reduction possible as a soldier, as a man on the ground, is going to be big. 
We have a 30% weight reduction over 308. And as you can see from the testing that we did with a little bit more power. So that's extremely important. That one allows you to carry more weight like we do on our onward research rig right now, or whatever you have, you're able to carry more ammo. This is a really big deal for guys who are running machine guns that are in 277. So if you have a 1200 round basic loadout for like an MG gunner, you're looking at a 20 pound reduction. That's a lot more ammo that you can carry. You're not gonna carry less you know, weight because the US government won't let you do that. So now you're carrying more ammo, but hey, that's more firepower. That's more uh, death that can be dealt. But <clears throat> not only is around uh, polymer and able to withstand everything, but in addition to that, from what we've seen, the rounds themselves are performing extremely well. This brings us to the very butt of the weapon. The problem with a bullpup has always been inability to adjust. That being said, this rifle was definitely developed with wearing a plate carrier in mind. I haven't had any troubles with it, but for the very tall or the very short, it could certainly be an issue. And that is the nature of bullpups. So a couple of mentions we'll make here. One, I want a little bit more of a magazine flare because I love that stuff. And the trigger is really, 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 really awful. And really makes this actually a pain to fire. If this had a really good trigger, like a geysley like trigger, and it is doable on a bullpup, the Tabor has an incredible trigger, um, then we'd have a much better weapon. I understand they were under constraints, but this is something I'd like to see solved. Um, with the trigger, this gun becomes very difficult to shoot at long distance. Agreed, Micah? Uh, it becomes difficult to shoot at short distance. Yeah, it even becomes difficult to shoot at short distance due to how bad that trigger is. A better trigger, we'd have an incredible, incredible weapon in my opinion, and I would really I'm really interested to see how this ends up developing and how the round ends up developing and where polymer ammunition as a whole goes. Now it should be noted, True Velocity also makes 308, 556 and many other rounds. Um, and again, you have that same weight reduction um, compared to your brass ammo, which is a big deal. So guys, as a whole, this is a very light recoiling rifle. This is a very forward thinking rifle in my opinion. I really like the controls, even though they're so different. This is a rifle I wanna see more from. The trigger really holds it back, but I'm very interested to see what the future holds. Mi Micah, come in here for a sec. What do you think, dude? Camera guy, Micah. What's your background, Micah? <laughs> Camera guy. Video An games. avid shooter. Video yeah, games. I shoot a lot of guns. So my overall thoughts were like pretty much everything on this thing rocks, yeah. especially in full semi. If it had a good trigger, I would want one of these in my arsenal like ASAP. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Get I think it's got and we're good. some of the most insane and cool features and forward thinking yeah. that I've seen in a long time. You said you well put, sir. Thank well you. Put. So guys, that brings us to the end. I always love looking at future military tech and this is very intriguing. So with all that being said, train with what you got, stay out there, make sure that you hang out with your buddies, you train. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Tons of more cool things coming. We got nothing else for you. All right, final thing for you guys, that advice. Dad advice for today, never cut corners on anything that comes between you and the ground. Shoes, tires, mattress. <laughs> <laughs>